And we're back, and Joe is introducing the show again today. Welcome back to Is It Worth It? I am your host, Joe, and right beside me is Zach. Take what? it away, Zach. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Whose show is this? Uh, Joe and Zach's. Mmm. Yeah. I don't know that that's what your paperwork says. Uh, paperwork. We have paperwork. Yeah. Since when do we have paperwork? Uh, since I just said. I like this new thing where I introduce the show because I enjoy it. Well, let's see what the people say. The uh, people who will say what they want. Yeah, you're struggling already. Yeah. Maybe. I'm All right. Well, welcome back to Is It Worth It? This is the podcast where we talk about just about anything. A lot of entertainment stuff, pop culture. Except Zach's mom. Uh, yeah, we don't usually bring my mom up. Don't know why we're doing that right now, but all right, Joe. Um, basically, we're just two regular guys that, you know, we want to be your friends. You probably don't want to be our friends. That's fair. But we need friends. I mean, like, you might. I'm pretty good. Like, I only need a couple. How many you got? Like, three? I have like three or four slots to fill, yeah. Slots to fill? Oh, man, you heard it here, folks. If you want to be Joe's friend, hit him up. Fill my slot. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. No. No. Joe has a girlfriend. Didn't see that. Didn't he, say that. Yeah, you did. Nope. All right. Basically, the premise of all this, though, is, you know, this is episode six, I believe. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It is episode six. Something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we're doing here is just talking about things that we think are cool and important, and we're going to let you know if it was actually worth our times to watch it. So, one one of the biggest things that's been happening in entertainment over the past few months, I'd say, since... How long ago do you think uh, we first got news that this was happening? Um, I think that it's it's actually been for a while now. I think it's been in development for a while, but we we got the the, the date like a few months ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, We're going to talk about El Camino this week. Uh, We'll go into some other stuff later on, but that's going to be the bulk of this episode. Uh, So this one's for all the Breaking Bad fans out there. Basically, Joe had seen El Camino the day it came out, right? Last oh, week? Oh, yeah. Around yeah. then, yeah. Um, I just watched it before we came over here because I hadn't. I really wanted to, and this seemed like it would be the perfect segment to talk about. Um, first off, before we get into too much, go ahead and tell me, on a scale of 1 to 10, where you rate this in then at the end of this, we'll say if it was worth it. Okay, so go ahead and give me your rating first. I'd give it first. an eight point eight. That's that's a heavy. Uh, what do you give the Breaking Bad series overall? Probably a nine point five. I think the the El Camino was good. I enjoyed it. I wouldn't say it's as good as Breaking Bad because. What about Better Better Call Saul? Is it better than Better that? Call Saul? Is probably a nine point three. Okay. Okay. El Camino is really good. Don't get yeah. me wrong. It's yeah, yeah. one of the better things 8.8 out of 10 is oh very yeah good. you don't get those on the often. scale yeah yeah, that's yeah. Fair. most most good things are like a seven yeah. seven and a half no that's fair this was a really good show you can't really put it on the level of breaking bad or better call saul because it's an epilogue and oh, it's yeah. good at what it is yeah but it is not supposed to be a groundbreaking show that explores the drug trade and things like that it's, it's supposed an to wrap epilogue up. to yeah. something else it does that really well but its ceiling is really probably a nine so that's probably what i would give it yeah um my my thing is it's hard to make a really good like really good um movie within that time span especially when this is after a six season series like we had like a hundred hours worth of breaking bad prior to this you know what i mean or yeah. better call saul put together so to try and squeeze the entirety of jesse's situation into two hours i think they did the best job that they, they could. definitely did i as again I, as i was saying what i was what i tried to say with the the ceiling being nine there, it was never going to be more than a nine no because it was never going to be breaking bad no because it, it was very good at what it did of course yeah um yeah so you give it an eight eight i give it a nine i'd probably give breaking bad Honestly, probably one of only two things that I would ever give it a 10 out of 10. Mm. I'd give Breaking Bad a 10 out of 10. What's the other thing? Your fiance? The Godfather. Oh. Well, we're talking about entertainment. My fiance is always a 10 out of 10. Okay. The only 10 out of 10, 10, Joseph. Okay. Anyway. um, So, yeah, I I would probably give this a 9. 
I still have yet to watch Better Call Saul. Um, kind of purposefully at this point because I'm waiting for it to be over so that I can just watch the whole thing. Because I'm big on that is that if there's a series that I want to watch that I know is close to the end, which they can't do that many of these seasons for Better Call Saul. Especially I think it's going to probably a- end after this season or the next. Because, I mean, <clears throat> Breaking Bad only went five seasons. When, no, it's and fifth then, season's coming up in 2020. And, and Better Call Saul is a prologue, correct? Right. So you eventually have to hit Breaking Bad. Well, that's not so much of an issue just because... Don't spoil too much. It's but. it's it's just not quite that time period yet. Yeah, but it's close enough. It's close enough, but I mean, look at Breaking Bad. The first two se- two or three seasons took place over six months. Yeah, that's fair. I think uh, Breaking Bad took place a year for four seasons. It was one year, four and a half seasons. Oh yeah, and then the late seasons, right? It's a and then it yeah. Yeah, the the years eventually go by. But you can fit a lot of time into a couple seasons. So I, I think this podcast, for the most part, we're going to cover Breaking Bad and El Camino. Um, I guess we should kind of give a uh, recap, sort of, like at the beginning of El Camino, like where we are at at the point that, by the way, spoilers, um, if you haven't seen this, go ahead, skip this one, because we're going to get spoiler heavy on this one, because this needs to be heard. Um for this point, if you've seen Breaking Bad, though, we're just going to recap real quick. And then as soon as we get into El Camino, you might want to go to later on in the podcast. Um, but so they kind of start off by showing you the entirety of the situation up till this point. Right. Um, they, they really didn't stick too much to the early on seasons. It was kind of past the point of when Walt was really in the Heisenberg like stage you know what i mean when he was like forcing jesse to do these things like telling him that he doesn't have another choice when his brother-in-law gets murdered um that whole scene with all of that and then eventually the recap ends where el camino picks up which is right when walt comes to save jesse right walt hadn't um at, at that point El Camino happens after Walt has been... Walt and Jesse didn't uh, cook drugs together for a while before the season finale. It was probably like a year. Yeah. Right? They... um, Because Jesse Jesse was in that cage for six months. Walt had tried to kill Jesse. He had had tried to have the the neo-Nazis kill Jesse. Yeah. And instead, the neo-Nazis killed Hank, yeah. let Walt go, and took Jesse prisoner and made him cook meth. It made him cook meth. meth. Yeah. Right. Because they saw, obviously, dollar signs. Right. Right. So... Um, yeah, it picks up a little bit after that. Then Walt comes up, saves Jesse, kills all the neo-Nazis, um, and basically lets Jesse go free, and then Walt dies, and that's where El Camino picks up. So, just to talk about Breaking Bad first a little bit, what do you think was Walt's reasoning for doing that? You think it was just kind of a last ditch, like, I gotta do one good thing before I die type well, of he's thing? about to die, yeah. right? So... At the end of Breaking Bad, Walt realizes he doesn't have very much time left, and he tells the the, the vacuum cleaner guy, the guy who's yeah, who, keeping him there, he says, who, oh, spoilers, is, is in El Camino. El Camino. He tells him what, great. at what point, at some point, you're going to come here, because he, he comes and visits him once a month in New Hampshire, and I'm going to be dead of cancer. Yeah. What's going to happen to my money? Is it going to go to my children? And the guy basically says... Would it make me feel? Would it make you feel better if I told you I was going to give it to your to your family? Yeah. So Walt realizes he's got to do something. He's just being useless. He's yeah. surviving, but that's it. But that's it. He probably, Especially if he's not doing chemo, he's not getting better. He realizes at die. this point there's no end game for him. He's yeah. going to either die or go to jail. There's yeah. nothing oh, yeah. better than that. So he realizes he's going to try why to go write. to jail. And why go to jail at this point if you might only have six months left to live? Right. You might as well find something to do with that last little bit of life you have. Right. He realizes he's going to right his wrongs in two ways. He's going to make sure his family gets the money. That was basically... It was his goal at the start of the show. Yeah. And it moved beyond that. But his goal was always he wanted oh, his family to survive. Oh, that. And he wanted to save Jesse because he still felt guilty for trying for the, to kill the situation him. that Jesse yeah. was ended up in. So his motivation wasn't to survive. His motivation was basically revenge, take care of his family, and save Jesse. And and that's why I think the finale for the series, which 
it kind of sucks that it doesn't feel like I can say that it's a finale anymore, you know, with this continuation of sorts, because now there is more to the story. I think it's still a finale in that Walt story's done. Yeah. Everything that has to do with Walt is is over. The White family saga is done. It's it's completed. You know? Yeah. They're never going to come back to that. No. It's about Jesse. In Better Call Saul, there are some flash forward to Saul. So Saul's story is still left out there to be told what happens to him, you know, after the Do you think they'll do a Saul bad. movie? No, but I wouldn't be surprised if they went into that a little bit in Better Call Saul. I wouldn't be surprised if Jesse came back in that show in, in the last season and we kind of see a uh, flash forward and, and see what happens to, to Jesse and Saul. I think they've, they've sort of left the door open on that. Really? Yeah. Based off of what you've seen so far? Yeah. Or, or do you mean in the El Camino? But El Camino and Better Call Saul is not about Saul after after Breaking Bad. No, it's before. But every season finale and season Somehow, premiere, yeah. there's just a flash forward of him working in a Cinnabon in Omaha, which is what he said he was going to do. And there's nothing That's important funny. happening there, but yeah. you just see this is what happened to him. He ended up working at a Cinnabon after Breaking Bad. Yeah. So his story's still out there. Yeah. I think that's the fun part about all of this is just how intricate these plots are without seeming without seemingly looking intricate. You know what I mean? In yeah, the there's sense, so many moving pieces. In, in the sense of it feels so realistic. Like if I was just a bad kid, you know, like Jesse, like down on my luck did all these drugs, was stupid, and I somehow get into business with this other guy. like Former chemistry teacher. Yeah. And I would think that that would be a safe bet because this guy's trying to be safe because he's just trying to get his money so he can give yeah. to his family. You know what I mean? Like, this all makes perfect sense. Like, for this to fall into place the way I that I think it that it makes sense in that it could happen. Yeah. Obviously, most people are not Walt. No, of course not. And most people aren't able to avoid the police for as long as he no, of course not. Um, so, I really liked, because you had watched the last two seasons of Breaking Bad before you watched El Camino. Right. Do you think that really enhanced your experience definitely. of being able to watch it? it? It definitely did, aside from the fact that the last two seasons of Breaking Bad are just some of the best television oh, probably ever absolutely. made. Yeah. It really just gets you in the feel so you you understand, you know, what the background is because they really did just pick up where they lost, where they left off. It was like another episode of breaking bad, especially just watching the last couple, you know, just the, the last couple episodes really enhanced the viewing experience because, Oh yeah. Because I mean, that's it's right where they pick up. Yeah. It's yeah. just continuing along. So did you like finish the last episode and then immediately yeah. watch El yeah, Camino? Cool. That's fun. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I might have to do that to watch it a second time because I, I feel like, I don't think I've ever watched Breaking Bad two times fully the way through. It's one of those shows where, you know, like stuff like The Office, you can just throw on and watch anytime. Yeah, Breaking it, Bad's pretty heavy. Yeah. There's so like you on. have to be in the mood to watch that. You right. know what I mean? Where it's like, if I'm going to watch this, I'm really dedicating my time to yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's really difficult. I feel like sometimes with shows, um, especially with so much depth that that has, um, but I'll have to go back to it eventually just because it's so good. And I know that it won't taint the experience the second time around. Whereas like with some shows, like you can overwatch it probably. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like some things like The Office isn't one of those shows. Like I could watch those episodes forever and still think they're funny every time. And I think a lot of people would agree with that sentiment. But there are some shows where you can only watch a single episode a couple times or like a movie that you've seen you can yeah. only watch it a couple times and then you're like this is kind of and i don't even now. think that's the difference between a sitcom and a drama because there's a lot of procedural dramas where, oh yeah you, know, you can you can watch it over and over again law and order or something like that Grey's anatomy yeah but when it's something like you know breaking bad sort of like this prestige upper yeah. level tv yeah where it's not just um like basically a monster of the week but yeah not really a monster but sort of the plot of the week and then you move on where it's heavily serialized yes. yes everything you have to pay attention to everything everything matters and it's not just like well there's a criminal they have to catch today and they're probably going to catch him and then everything will be the same it's not time. like scooby-doo right 
like or any police drama. Yeah, and and that's the crazy thing about drama. this is imagine. I mean, we're so spoiled now, where like with Netflix, how they bring everything out in like a full season, like immediately, so you can binge watch it. Right. Like, imagine if with Breaking Bad, like I saw, I started watching Breaking Bad when it was in the fifth season, I believe. So the only season I had to wait for to watch was season six. But there wasn't a season six. Oh, five was in two right, parts. Season five part. I always say yeah. that there's six seasons, but it's five in two parts. Um, but I started at the beginning of the fifth season. So I watched all four seasons, then the first part of the fifth season. So then all I had to do was wait for the last portion. And I remember, this was six years ago, I bought the second portion of the fifth season of Breaking Bad on iTunes so I could watch it. <laughs> because you They didn't have it on Netflix. No, they didn't have it they didn't have it anywhere. Yeah. You had to do that back yeah. then. Yeah. I dropped like twenty dollars on it. I was like, I gotta watch this right now. Mm-hmm. Worth every penny. Oh yeah. I probably still have it on my phone somewhere. Yeah. But um man, I I just think that we don't realize just how important like think about from a writing perspective how hard that would be to where everything is weaved so perfectly together that like in El Camino, like, because we're about to get to that, um, it brings back all of those things and then integrates it into this new portion that is six years old, by the way. Yeah. You know, I've thought about this a while, a lot, like just in general, not just with this, but writing a TV show or writing, not necessarily a movie, but more so with a TV show with just realizing there's so much you can do right you have this whole blank slate of where you want characters to go and you probably have so many choices how do you make something like breaking bad where it just seems like you every choice you had you made the right one how do you make something out of nothing like that right with a movie it's different because you sort of you you know where you want to go from the start, so you have like a basic plot. You're like, yeah. okay, this and you is know what where the you want it going to be about. Yeah, with a TV show, it's different because it's hours and hours and hours, and it's plot after plot after plot, and making it all intertwine and 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 just making those choices. Well, I mean, think about around. books too, like J.K. Yeah. Rowling. Like, yeah. didn't she know the end of Harry Potter like during the first book? Probably, yeah, yeah. Like, think about that. Yeah. Like, and those are thousands of pages right. we're talking right. about in between. Yeah. That you have to find a way to weave from point A to point B, make it interesting enough for everybody to be held onto the edge of their seats for eight books. And then at the end of it, Same. it works out perfectly. Yeah. Sometimes I've thought about, you know, with a book, because I, I don't, I I've, sometimes I, 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 I don't want to write a book because that's a lot of work. But I do, but it think is a about lot of work. just starting somewhere and just seeing where it goes. Yeah. Not really have, like, you, you have, like, a general outline, but just kind of writing. Did I tell you that I wrote, like, 30 pages of a book once? I'm not sure. You, no. You might have, I'll, I'll you might tell have. you yeah. after this because okay. I don't want somebody to steal my idea. Okay. But it was yeah, good. Yeah, don't do that. But I, I feel like you can just sort of start and, and, and see where it takes you. If you're a good enough writer, I'm not saying I am. You probably are. But, like, no, if you you're are, good enough Joe. at... I'm saying if you're good enough Joe's at just fiction, being humble right now. But if, if you're good enough as, as like, a fictional writer, yeah, and, like and someone it is like definitely, Rowling, It is definitely or, hard to yeah. do fiction. Because you're making it up. You completely make a different universe. Right. She made up entire languages. Yeah. Like, like think about, like, J.K. No, uh, J.K. Tolkien. J.R. Tolkien. J.R.R. Tolkien. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm mixing two names together. Um... But no, but she she had to like you create your own words within right. it too, like muggles. Right. She yeah. made that up. She made up all these different terms yeah. that involve yeah. wizardry. Yeah, like that. Those weren't vocabulary already. Like so, she did make up her own language to a degree. Yeah, but like that's that's crazy. Where you completely like you. I, I wonder if they look at the world and they say, if I could make the world how I want it, this is how it would be. Because you know that, like, we all think that sometimes. You know what I mean? We just don't necessarily, like, put it down on pages. Yeah. Like, because a lot of us just have stupid ideas. We're just like, man, if I could start everything over again, I'd invest money in this so that I'd have a ton of money. Yeah, Yeah, like, stupid things like that. Yeah. Versus, 
having an entire world in your head and saying this is what i actually want to do you yeah. can you have it all in front of you and and you're you're making it that's just crazy yeah. like people like stephen king who write like a book a year i just don't understand that oh. and it's it's not even like a hundred page book it's like close to a thousand pages worth of a book yeah. like i have i think like 10 stephen king books yeah and it is literally i think 1700 pages or something stupid like that and he wrote that in like a year yeah i guess if you just have the ideas and they just keep flowing and flowing but that 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 like to bring it back to breaking bad that's what this feels like right is that like imagine all of the pages that it took for them to write this like with the tv like yeah with like a um hundreds of pages did you ever take um i've 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 seen screenplays i know like the screenplay actual course though my mom's written a bunch of screenplays, so I've really like I've seen the yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, what do you mean she's written a bunch oh, of screenplays? She's written some screenplays. How? Like she's like gotten like the software and like written like movie screenplays. Did she like send them to people? Yeah, she didn't. Nobody, nobody like has has like accepted them yet, but she's written like some some legit screenplays. What, dude? That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like. When I did know, she do that? Uh, past couple of, past. 10 years maybe just because she's been bored because she's retired or what i think it's just something she enjoys she enjoys writing and she has that's ideas crazy. she likes fiction you know creative person that's awesome yeah why doesn't she try and do like a tv show instead that it's probably easier to i mean she's get, tried to get in touch with so many people and they're all i feel like it's easier to get a tv show greenlit than it is to get a movie because the budgets are way different yeah i i think it's just at, at that point it's it's really you just got to know someone oh know, right? yeah no for sure yeah um, and hope that you're it lands in the right pile. Well, the, and that's just it is like, they could be incredible, yeah. but if the right person doesn't see it, it doesn't no, matter. It yeah. But yeah, like every, they basically say that a page is a minute. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how long is each episode of Breaking Bad? Like 50 minutes? minutes? 50 minutes. Yeah. yeah let, let's say like 50 minutes. Okay. Yeah. That's 50 pages per episode. How many episodes do you think there were? Like 50? There were 80 something, I think. Yeah. So, like, that is literally 3,000 pages. Yeah. At least. Yeah. That you have to weave in. Not just. It's not just dialogue. the dialogue. It's it, it is the how intro the people and the react. outro and the, what they're doing, what yeah. they're saying, what the setting looks like, where they are, you know, all that. What you can hear, what the audience, what you want the audience to know, what you don't want the audience to know, you know, all the all the intricacies of All that. right, before before we get into the El Camino portion, I just thought of something. I want you to give me the three best characters in Breaking Bad. Top three. Top you, don't three. Have, you don't have to I do them in order if you don't want to, but yeah. um, I would prefer if you did. Because uh, it's harder that way. Why don't you go first? Because I asked you. Okay, um, I think the you take your time. The top three, you got to start with um, the person that you really just have to start with is called Mister Stallings, um, and he's stalling. <laughs> I'll go first if you want. Thanks. All right, no, I'll go. I'll go. I'll what? Go. Uh, why? Because I, I got. I got. Do you uh, already have your three? Yeah, I got. After three. thinking for well, three seconds, there's not seconds that many characters song. in the show, right? Th- uh, there's a decent amount, and right. some of them are really underrated, in my opinion. I but like. Go ahead. I'm going to give honorable go mention, I think, to Skinny Pete. Yeah, Skinny Pete deserves. Skinny it, Pete's man. a good character. Just well, we'll get, we'll get to him I mean, later. Let's too. give it to let's give it to him and Badger. I think just yeah, they're, they're a duo. They're sort of like a they yeah, come together. They're right? a duo. I'll give you just loyal. Yeah, not. Bad regular guys, guys. But they they're also, just regular I think guys. What they portray is just like sort of regular losers, yeah, who like have good hearts, definitely, but also they have their issues. But they are just kind of losers, you know. Oh yeah, but no, they're, I totally. They're, they're agree. just losers with good hearts, and they do a really good job portraying that. Oh, for I sure. I think number three, you got to go Walt. Okay, you're going three with Walt. Yeah, yeah, Damn. Walt's a great All character, right. okay, but... Man, is that I a like, hot take I think, already? I think part of what makes Breaking Bad are the side characters. Oh, I agree. Right? So you gotta go, three is, is Walt, who's just, you see him develop, obviously, people have written hundreds of pages about how, you know, and analyzing how Walt went from this mild-mannered chemistry teacher to a drug lord who didn't care about his family or anything like that. Um, you gotta love Walt. I think number two is Mike. 
Mike is just probably one of the coolest characters. Just a gun for hire, fixer, able to do anything, motivated yeah. by something that's actually good. Oh, yeah. Even though he's not a good guy, he's a murderer, he kills people, you know? But he feels like a good guy. He yeah. just feels like he a feels good... He feels like the moral compass because he's smart and he, he's wise and he's He been feels around. like a good old man. Yeah. Like, that's what I feel like all grandpas would be like if they were in that trade. Yeah. You know? So he's not necessarily, like, he, he's not looking to hurt people. He's just doing his job. Yeah. He just sees it as business, you know? It's just yeah. his job. Number one is Gus, right? Gus, I Wow, think, you didn't even have Jesse in your top three. I like Jesse. Don't wow. Gus is, I think, probably one of the best villains in TV movie history. Totally agree. Totally Here agree. is a guy who is... As mild mannered as it as 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 it as it comes, right? It's perfect, right? He just looks like this guy who owns a chicken joint, right? Yeah. He gives his money to the DEA, supports community causes, supports a lot of good stuff. Is on the board of a nursing home, I think. Yeah, and he does such a good job between switching between being that mild mannered yep. guy and being the hard nosed drug kingpin right? oh yeah he's a kingpin for one sure. of my favorite scenes aside from when he dies oh just man cool that's my favorite scene in breaking bad is walt has just killed uh jesse has just killed gabe whitaker who is yeah. the other the, the other chemist who is helping them cook drugs and walt and jesse know they're in deep shit right and mike is standing with them as is this other guy i think his name was vincent i don't Quite yeah, no, I think it was Vincent. It was, it yeah. was Vincent, yeah, yeah. right. Because I can like hear Mike's voice saying Vincent yeah. right now. And they're sitting in the meth lab waiting for Gus. Yeah. And they know Gus is going to be real mad. There's oh, he's going to lose tension, his shit, right? of course. And Vincent decides, I'm going to show my boss what I'm worth. And he decides, yeah. I'm going to cook the meth for myself. I've been watching these guys do it for months. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. So he does it. And then Gus yep. comes in, right? Yep. And he doesn't say a word. Does he? No. No, I don't think he, he doesn't said that say a word, right? Yeah. He grabs a box cutter very quietly from the room, from a from a drawer. Yeah. And Vincent comes up behind him and he's like, Boss, look, I know how to do I know how to cook meth now, right? Out of nowhere he just slits his throat. Yep. Lets him bleed out like you would would with a chicken if you're trying to like, yeah, with like stab a, a chicken. Grease pig, you're just yeah. trying to kill it. And he kills him, splurts all his blood out. Gets it all over him. Walks back, takes a shower, washes mm-hmm. all the blood off. Yep. Takes his suit off, like takes his 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 overalls, the stuff he had put on, um, off. Puts his suit back on. Walks out and just says before he walks out, "Clean this up." And that's it. Yep. That's it. He doesn't even have to say a word to show his coolness, but also his his cruelty. dominance. His, his dom- dominance. Yeah, he's basically the, the dominant person yes. in that scenario. And he is clearly, like, and that's the crazy part, is we think of Walt, like, because Walt wants to be that. Walt wants to be the alpha dog. He says, like, I am the one who knocks, you know, yeah. all that. Walt's he's not, not for most of the show. He's not. He's the guy who's listening not, to not, the not other Not until guys. the end, at least, you know. Like, for a very small amount of time. The very end, yeah. Like, and that's it. But he wants to be that so bad. Because he's been so mild mannered his entire life that he thinks that if he makes something of himself by the end of this, then it'll be worth it. Yeah. And 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 what's crazy is like his motivations seem to change eventually. His motivation goes from making money for his family to being, to being the being biggest respected. empire. Like he he says at one point that I don't want to be, and it says it in the recap for El Camino. Um, he talks about I don't I don't want to be. A man that wants to make money or I, I don't want to be in the money business or the meth business. I want to be in the empire business. Yeah. He, he just one point, wants the power of it. He talks, he's, ta- he's talking to, uh, to Skyler at one point, right? And he, Walt is not sort of a down period for Walt, right? Yeah. He's trying which, to which, figure which part out. I don't, I don't quite remember. I think it was season four, but he's weak ish in the plot of the show. And Skyler comes to him and says, I'm afraid I'm going to get a knock on the door. Right. Oh yes! And oh man! It's gonna that, be someone. I lied. That's the most iconic scene in the entire waiting series. Waiting to to shoot you, you know, yeah. to kill you, and he says, "I'm the one who knocks." It, except, I am yeah, the listen, one who knocks. you you got you yeah. got to say it right. Yeah, you can because because he goes like this. He goes something along the lines of, 
Yeah, all right, you be Skylar and I'll be Walt. Uh, go no. ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, come on, Joe. Well, we got to do this. I'm afraid that, you know, somebody's going to come and knock on the door. And, and Why is Skylar Southern? I, I don't know. I is don't, that the only know. voice you have in your head? Well, well, well I, I just don't want them to... to Somebody's going to knock on the door yeah. and, and they're going to shoot you. And they're going to be coming for you. Skylar. I don't think you understand. I am the one who knocks. That's basically how it went. Except Skylar's not a southern oh, belle. Oh, whoa. I, I, I do declare. Nope. Sky, not Skylar. Yeah, I can't do a southern accent. I kind of wish... You know what? No. Before we get into that, let's do the uh, promo spot real quick. Because... Sure. This is the perfect separation period for this because the rest of this podcast, we're basically going to talk about El Camino. Um, but before we do, let's talk about our sponsor for today. Same sponsor that we've always had so far, which is eToro. Now, you've heard us talk about eToro a couple times before. It's a social trading platform, which is unlike most other platforms where, you know, it could get to be a little bit too much. Like, there's too much clutter. You don't understand half of what's going on because there's too many numbers, too many figures. You got to press too many things. You don't need all that. Let's be honest. Joe, do you like all that? I don't like all that. No, you don't like all that. It's a super clean and simple interface. You know, you could probably get your grandma on this. And you care about a simple interface. Because who wants something complicated? I don't. Nobody does. Nobody wants complicated. Come on. You get a news feed, charts, advanced analysis tools. There's 14 different coins that you can currently trade with, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, Litecoin, Zcash, and a bunch more. Okay. What's really cool about this is if you sign up, you can get 100K in virtual money. 100K? 100K. Wow. Joe, do you know what you could do with 100K? A hundred thousand things off the dollar menu. Yeah, sure. If it was real money. But it gives you the ability to say, hey, you know, I might not necessarily know what I'm doing when it comes to trading. Day trading's tough. You can only do so much. You know, it's hard to make, you know, a living doing that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, with this, it kind of gives you the ability to say, hey, you know what? If I had money to invest, this is how I would do it. And then, once you figured that out, you can kind of see if if you'd be able to actually make more money. And what's crazy to me, I say this every time, it blows my mind. Absolutely. They've been <laughs> they've been around for twelve years now. Two thousand seven. Since two thousand seven, there have been over ten million users. Ten million. Okay. How many people are in the United States, Joe? I just told twenty eight. Something like that. Close. Yeah. 10 million users, okay? That's incredible. This company is something else. And I know everybody around here, Dan, all the other guys on You, Me, and BTC, Ryan in his podcast, they've been using this for a little bit now, and it's kind of been a competition. You get free money with this if you go to youmeandbtc.com backslash trade. Let me say that again for you real quick. You, me, and btc.com backslash trade. You can sign up, get 100K for free. Start trading, people. Come on. You don't have anything to lose. Stop it's not wasting even real your money. time and start trading. It's not real money. No. Play around. It's fun. You already care about Bitcoin, probably. We all do. We want to see what happens with it. So why not play around with fake money? There's no reason not to. Thank you, eToro, for sponsoring us. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. We do. And you guys should too. Please check it out. All right. Back into El Camino though. We talked about Breaking Bad for a while. We did. 37 minutes in. You know, we've talked about Breaking Bad every episode of the show, haven't we? Probably. Yeah. We probably got to get away from that after this. Probably. Yeah. But we might as well have one last hoorah. Let's get it all out while we can. Let's get so, it El Camino, baby, let's talk about it. Let's do it. So, 
I want you to tell me first, before we get into like the nitty gritty of all of it, what is your favorite scene in El Camino? I think my favorite scene, spoilers, by the way. Yeah, this whole section of the show at this point, already. we're 37 minutes in, okay? This will probably take the rest of the show, so this is it. This is it. Now, this is I'm it. glad yeah. you guys tuned in for 37 minutes of the show, but if you haven't seen El Camino, you don't want to listen to this last section. Tune in next week, but this is where it gets My good. My favorite part of the show is Todd and Jesse are in... Uh, it's a flashback, right, to Todd's apartment. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've taken yeah, a weekend off. You did, you did tell me Todd that. Todd has asked Jesse for his help. Jesse, well, this no, point explain, is a explain... Yeah, yeah. So Jesse's a prisoner of Todd and the neo-Nazis, right? Yes. And, and Todd's a weird guy, and he asks weird, for his help guy. for the weekend. Yeah. So he lets him out of his cage... Or out of you which know, is crazy he's that doing. he's in a cage. Yeah, and he asks him to come help him at his apartment, and Jesse's like, "Sure, whatever." So first, he helps him move something to his car, right? And he does that, and then Todd he goes into Todd's apartment, and Todd's like, "I got to do some painting," and T- Jesse thinks that's what he needs his help with. So yeah. he's like, "Okay, you want me to to, to help you with the painting?" And, and Todd's like, "No, I mean maybe if we have time later." And then you see what Todd needs help with, and he asks in the most nonchalant way, he killed his cleaning lady. <laughs> he strangled her. And Todd's no, he, like... he shot her. I think he strangled her. No, nah, dude, she has bullet wounds. When they, when they show a side profile of her, she has blood Okay, so he, he shot her. He shot her in the head, right? And Todd's like, oh, don't make a big deal about this. I already feel terrible. I think Todd's performance just makes that scene in the nonchalant way where he's like this kind of sweet, goofy, apologetic kid, also a psychotic killer. Oh, yeah. He's like a serial killer at that point. It's sort of where you see what Todd is. And we already know that he's a a real creepy dude. He's killed uh, the... Uh, Jesse's ex, basically, in cold blood. He killed another kid in cold blood. He's a murderer. This is just where you see again, like, oh, this dude's a psycho. It's a great scene. I think the whole scene of that flashback is good because it not only gives you a good dynamic between Jesse and Todd, there's also a reason for it, which is that Jesse is recalling the time when he went to Todd's apartment because he needs to go back now that Todd is dead to get money. Yeah. So that's my favorite scene. Yeah. No, I, I would say that's probably top three of the scenes for me um man it's really tough i really like the movie a lot yeah um obviously i gave it a nine you gave it an 8.8 um man my point two points yeah those point two points they'll get you um i would probably say dang that's that's a hard thing what is my favorite part of it because i i'm fresh off of this so I, I just finished watching this before we came over, like literally 15 minutes before we came over. I didn't get to digest it very much no. yet. Um, I liked a lot of the flashback scenes, if I'm being honest. You did. Like, I think one of the coolest parts was, and, and I know it kind of sounds dumb, but it, it shows how much Jesse has grown in this time period at the very end when him and Walt are at that diner. Yeah. And he's, Walt is kind of like giving him fatherly advice at this point. Like, man, I wish I was you. You have your whole life ahead of you basically. And right. This is right before Jesse like relocates with the vacuum cleaner guy. Um, But it's so funny because it, it shows Jesse like, Right after their first, like, major... Their like, first big yes. bonding experience. Yeah. And so he has all this money. He's being flashy with it. He asks the kid to leave the pitcher at the table and gives him a $100 bill. Like, it's just so funny. He's throwing his money around. He's, yeah. He, it's his first taste of being a big shot. Yeah, so he... And then you get to, like, see where he is now immediately afterwards, which he's a broken man at this point. He's, he's a, had so much shit happen to him. He's a broken man. He's also grown. He's matured so, so much. much. He's not just the little the, the kid going around yelling bitch all the time anymore. He's, I don't think he said it one time in this movie. Only in the flashbacks. Yeah, only in the you flashbacks. You see it sort of in the clothes he wears, the face, his face. Like, yeah. Jesse was always sort of meant to look like 
loser, you know, with yeah. uh, the baggy clothes and the just like a trash, trashy dude, yeah. you know? Even, even with the flashbacks when he's the prisoner, he's still he's, wearing the baggy clothes and shit. He's meant to look like a lowlife. Yeah, you know? of course a, he is. A, one of the guys, one of the young kids you'll see on the street and you'll think, he's up to no good. And yeah. you know what? Jesse was up to no good. Of course he's he right. was. You see him now... And it's lo- it's it's obviously farther away. It's 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 you know he's aged a lot. The actor Aaron Paul is now forty years old. Yeah, so he looks older. He looks hardened, like battle hardened, weathered. Like he's been through so much shit. Yeah, and he's come out the other side of it. Not he has a different view on the world now. Oh, you know? totally. He's not looking for money or a way. He to just get wants high. to get out. He wants to survive. Yeah. And start fresh. Well, and and I think the biggest, the turning point in this entire uh, film, in my opinion, was the scene where he goes to get that money at Todd's house, where he's trying to figure out because he he it has flashbacks of Todd when, um, they talk about him cleaning him killing the cleaning right. lady, and he said, "Well, I guess I, I got to hide my money again." Right. And he's like, "I have an idea, but it might take a little bit of engineering." And so Jesse has to figure out the entire time where he put the money because this money is basically his only escape route. Like, this is all he has. Yeah. If he doesn't he figure needs this out, he's dead. 125K. It ends up he actually needs double that. Yeah. But he, he yeah. realizes, like, if I'm not able to pay this guy to get me to safety, yeah, I'm going to die or I'm going to get or I'm going to get police. to jail. Yeah. 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 And you might as well die at that point. He's well, never getting out of right. he's never getting out of jail at that point. No, he's never going to because he's murdered him. so many different people. He's he's smuggled and sold like millions of dollars worth of drugs at this point. You don't get out of jail. Like you might as well kill yourself. Honestly, probably at that point, yeah. Like that might have probably been his only other out. Um, but which is super dark, by the way. Usually. <laughs> Usually this podcast isn't like horribly dark, but honestly, those are his only two options at this point. And I think he realizes that, um, which I kind of wish they would have shown a little bit. Yeah. Like that, like that little bit of, like they did show his, um, like PTSD of the incident basically where like they were showing flashbacks of like, um, when the cops, like the fake cops were telling him that like, Hey, you better not do this because mm-hmm. we got eight other dudes downstairs. Yeah. And he started crying on the back of the head of the one guy, um, because he was remembering Todd. He was remembering that entire incident and he started, Where to, he had a chance basically yeah. to get free Yep, and he had a gun and that, he didn't and he didn't. Yeah. Because he had, his spirit had been broken. Yep. And his spirit broke again right yeah. there, yeah. which I kind of wish it would have you know, delved into a little bit of the fact that never once in any of this, it kind of felt too much like Jesse, where in other situations, it kind of shows like how his spirit was broken. I feel like if they would have shown a scene where he was just like, you know what, it might just be better if I killed myself. That would have been more realistic. Probably, yeah. It would have felt more like his spirit really is broken. Yeah. Because regular Jesse would have never thought of that. He would have only thought of survival. He would have only thought of himself. And that felt like they tried to do that a little bit too much. That might be my only criticism of the entire movie. Really? Okay. Is that they? it didn't feel like they took him to the lowest he could have been. No. Because he always had... you you. He couldn't be the lowest he's always been because he'd already been there in Breaking Bad. And After his saw, girlfriend died? No. Or when? When he's imprisoned, right? Yeah, that's fair. So, in Breaking Bad, like, at the, that's a good at the point, end, actually. he's saved. Basically, that's yeah. where things are going to start going uphill from there. And I don't think it would have made sense to have things go down again. That's fair. Because that would have ruined... One of the good things that the movie did is it didn't ruin the Breaking Bad ending. Not at all. It didn't all. delete anything that had happened. Not at all. It continued it in a yeah, way that made a lot of sense. For sure. With the rest, in the context of the rest of the show. Had they changed that around, sort of, you would have felt sort of cheated by the finale. I can still think 100% of Breaking I would have felt Bad cheated. finale as the finale. I can stop Me watching too. it and it's fine. Yes. This is an epilogue. It's not... You don't meant, need it's this It's not meant to order change to complete the character. It. No. It's meant to emphasize things you want to emphasize, yeah. give, tie up loose ends, 
give people a good ending that you want to have a good ending, but it's not supposed to make major changes. The only thing that it changes is your impression of Jesse. Right. But That's in a better it, way. Which is what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Like yeah. you do not change yeah. how you feel about any other character. Right. Which they show a lot of the other characters. All of them. They show Mike, Walt, Hank briefly with the not Hank. with the recap. With the recap. Right. Well yeah. Um, but. They never showed Skylar. No. Um obviously Skinny Pete and Badger. Yeah. Um, which we already like those characters, yeah. But you like them way more. Like they're they're incredible at this point. I never gave you my top three for Breaking no, Bad. No, you didn't. Let's now that I'm thinking about we'll it, do that. Okay. Um. But you look at all these characters and you see the same type of people, right? For the most part, even the vacuum cleaner guy. You figured this dude's a hard ass. Yeah, he has to be in what he in does. That business, yeah. Yeah, with that, with he's trying to relocate people, mm-hmm. like, and he owns a vacuum business. You can't just have people walking in all of a sudden saying, "Hey, man, I know you do this thing. Here's all this money." It's like, no, we need to have some protocols here because yeah. if we don't, and that's I'm why he looks like he's a hard ass. You yeah, know? He's, he has to be. Yeah. Um, I guess was oh, so. I talked about. Honestly, I think you changed my opinion about that at that point. Because you're right. We shouldn't have two separate points where you show him completely broken. Especially because he was in captivity for six months. Right. Okay. At that point, you're right. There is nothing in this world I wouldn't kill myself. Not after I've been through hell here on Earth. You know? I would do everything in my ability after I've gotten out of captivity, to stay alive. So that was a really good point you brought up. Thanks. Um, what portion... So you gave it an 8-8. Eight, eight. Sure. Explain to me what could have been better then. I don't think anything could have been better. Sure. What I'm saying is the highest it was going to get was a 9 out of 10. But you gave it an 8-8. Eight, eight. I gave it an 8-8 eight, eight out of 9. Because wait, you gave it a what? An eight eight out of nine because it wasn't going to be. Oh, because you couldn't give it. A 10. I'm saying it yeah. wasn't because it's saying. not Breaking Bad because it's only an epilogue. Yeah, that was just automatically going to denote take one point down, oh, no yeah, matter how good it was. Sure. The fact that it was an eight eight out of the possible nine points it could have gotten is yeah. great. Right? Nothing is perfect. Nothing gets a perfect score. But I want to know where that point too. What could have been better? There has to be something. Well, you know, you have aging, you have aging characters, you have Todd. Oh, the bald cap scene. The bald cap. Man, that Todd was funny. looks like he gained like 80 pounds or something. Yeah, I know. Todd yeah. looks fat, man. Stuff, little things like that that don't actually matter. But it, but it kind of, like, you notice them enough, Yeah, though. you notice them. They're not big deals, though. That's See, why it's, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's about as close to perfect as you can be. But we did talk about how oh, um, they might have screwed up. On some of the characters with the aging process or right. getting too fat or whatever. One that they did not, which is the most important one, was Jesse. Yeah. Jesse looked the right ages in the flashbacks and in the, in the current time. Like, perfect. It made perfect sense yeah. the yeah. way that he looked. He went. He looked immature in some flashbacks. He looked yeah. like the immature kid he was. And he looked like the hard ass, the seasoned battle veteran, basically, that he is now. You ever think about how crazy it is that, like... So the very ending scene, major spoiler ahead, where he's with his ex-girlfriend. Right. Okay, his first ex. The one that, I mean, both of them died, but the first one who died from the drug overdose. The one he loved. Yeah, the one he really loved. Um, Which, I feel like he really loved the second one, too. No, he he didn't. He loved her kid. Yeah, he did love the kid. Yeah. That's why he wrote the letter. Yeah, it was never, it was it was bad that, that he killed her. That wasn't his, the woman he was in love well, with. He didn't that was, kill her. Well, it was bad that, that Todd killed her, but it was more he cared about the family. Yeah. It wasn't that he was in deep And that's why they they, yeah. they continued to torture him by right. saying, like, hey, we're going to go back for the kid if you right. don't figure this out. Um, crap, what was I saying? Um, yeah, his yeah. Jane. You were talking about Jane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where you ever think about how his hair was completely different in that scene? than it was in the very ending scene. Yeah. So, obviously, when they have a full movie like that, they have to shoot different portions at different times. So, they thought, okay, we're going to shoot this part first, then shave his head. Well, you, Because he has a shaved head for you most you got to think that they, sh- they 
did all of the scenes, the various scenes. So the flashbacks where he has hair, all of that was had to have been done first, done before the present day scene. Yeah, which is it's just like kind of crazy to think yeah, about that, yeah, like sure. after the fact, right. you know. Um, all right, you have your hot take for the week coming up. That'll be the last segment that we do. Okay. But first... I don't have a hot take this week. No, you have a hot take this week. You always have a hot take. There's got to be something good. Deep in them loins. It's got to be Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, or El Camino rated. Rated. That's okay. not what I meant. I have a good one. Related. I have a good okay. one. Okay. Save that till the end. Actually, you know what? If you do have a good one, let's just do that first, and then I'll give you my top three, and then we'll be done. My hot take has to do with Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul is a great show, right? Don't ruin it for me. Season four aired on AMC in October 2018. That is when it ended airing. It's still not on Netflix. So I haven't watched it. Season four is it? Because I don't have AMC. I want to watch it on Netflix. Season four is not there yet. You know what they do? Season five is not coming out till 2020. Well, that's the problem. They wait till season five. So I can't watch one. this even though it aired a year a year ago. It's That's it's it's bullshit, you know. You want to watch your show soon after. Hulu doesn't have this problem. Prime Video doesn't have this problem. You want to watch it right after it airs, but and now you're you can't. already paying for these services. Yeah. You're going to make you wait a year and a half before you watch the show. It's ridiculous. That's my hot take. So we all get screwed in this process. Yeah. Cuz I'm not going to buy the freaking AMC or whatever. That's bullshit. Especially if I already have these other services. Why not? What is Better Call Saul on? Hulu? On uh, Netflix. It's on Netflix? Yeah. That's just dumb. You would think that they would have a contract at that point saying like, hey, after a certain amount of time, we put it on here. Instead of, we got to wait till that new season comes out. That's stupid. All right. Let me give you my top three real quick. I'll give a uh, honorable mention just like you did. My honorable mention is Jesse. I'll at least give him that. I know I gave you shit for not having him in your top three, but after thinking it through, I agree. He's probably four in my opinion. Specifically, because his character was so underdeveloped for so long that it felt like it took too long for him to come together. So I loved him as a character eventually, but it took like three seasons before I even cared about him. Yeah. You know, so that's why he's four. He's sort of a side character for, yeah. for a while. Three, I'm putting Hank. Hank. Yes. I love Hank as a character. Why is that? Because every time I see him, I think to myself, oh shit, Walt's going to go down this time. When I, when I originally watched this, every time I saw Hank, I thought something crazy was going to happen. And it almost did almost every time. And then eventually... He dies and everything. I didn't see that coming at all. Like, that blew my mind that they did that. Any other regular show would have kept him alive, more than likely. Breaking Bad, they were like, nope, we're going to kill everyone you care about, which was awesome. Yeah. That was one of the best episodes, probably, when he... Probably the best episode when Hank dies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, probably. Um, Two, Mike. Love Mike. I think he's one of the best characters. He was my number two, right? too right yeah i think so um mike actually you know what no i'm gonna put walt there um mike doesn't even get in my top four now that i'm thinking about it because really? i want gus at my number one okay. too okay that's fair walt is two just for the simple fact that if you don't have walt you don't have the rest his development is great throughout the series you get to see him start as a chemistry teacher turn into a drug dealer then a drug i wouldn't say pin like kingpin at that point because he was under gus but like he's higher up in the ranks right then he becomes the drug kingpin and then you see his fall from grace you get to see the perfect you get to see the perfect arc of a story for a single character and then right at the end he gets his redemption from low to the highest he can be, to the to pits, lower than to the he pits. was. Yeah, the pits below because he didn't have his family. He didn't have anything. He was just out by himself. He's just a sick old man alone. Yes. And then he gets his redemption at the end. Then Gus, number one. I totally agree. I don't think that show is the same without that villain. 
I think Gus is more important than Walt. Really? Absolutely. If you don't have a good enough villain in that show, you don't have the full show. But I think Gus season is, five is one of the best seasons. Sure. But that's because you had to pave the way with Gus. For Walt to be the villain. Yes. You have to have Gus in order for that to happen. That's good. That's why he's so important, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. His character is just fun to begin with. Like what you said, he's so nonchalant. You you don't suspect him as the villain the entire time. Like, from the outside looking in, you would never guess he did any of these things. And he's so brutal with right. everything that he does. Right. But ultimately, that character is the antithesis of the show, yeah. in my opinion. You don't have him. You don't have Walt at the end of this. At the end of the series, where he wants to have the empire, because he didn't have something to strive for at that point. If it would have just been him and Jesse selling drugs and having some type of middleman service that wasn't Gus, they would have never. He Walt specifically would have never aspired to be anything else but that. He would have just got his money, gave it to his family, and died. Right. That was it. If he didn't have Gus and he didn't kill Gus, he didn't have an empire to take over. He didn't have those aspirations. So that's why Gus is the most important yeah, character. Yeah, I agree. I agree. He did a good, a much better job explaining why Gus is a better character than I did. So. No, I, I liked your reasoning because, like, from from like a regular standpoint, he is still the best character. Yeah. And then when you even yeah. look more in depth... Then he's even better. He's even better yeah. as a character. Yeah. That's why he's the most important, oh, in yeah. my opinion. I agree. Is because he, he wins on both facets of it. All right, Joe. I think that's about all the time we have we got, yeah. this week. This was episode six. We really gave it to him with Breaking Bad and El Camino this week. So we're we're going to take a break with the Breaking Bad stuff. I think so. I think maybe a couple weeks without Breaking Bad. Talk. Yeah, I know that's tough, but yeah. we're going to have to do it just for you guys. I think we have a fun idea for next week based yeah. off what Joe was saying. Yeah. So stay tuned. Yeah, you're going to love it. But, uh, Joe, go ahead and give him your uh, Twitter handle since you don't at play around on Instagram. At J-O-E-S-E-T-Y-O-N, at Joe Satyan. And I'm at Papa Ferguson on Instagram, P-O-P-P-A-F-E-R-G-U-S-O-N. And Twitter is Ferg underscore the underscore first. Check us out next week. We look forward to it, guys. Thanks yeah, so much for joining us and loving the show. Uh, we would love to interact with the fans a little bit more. We would... Love to hear from you on what we should talk about. Um, we have fun doing this. Yeah, we do. We really yeah, enjoy we it because it's just something that we would talk about anyway. But it's more fun having an audience that gets to bounce ideas off of it with you. So thanks for joining, guys. Thanks, Lyle. See you thanks, next week. Guys. See you later. <laughs> I don't know why I just copied him at the end there. Have a good week.